Welcome to Marvelous Designer's Quick Start Tutorial. In this video, we'll guide you through how to use the animation tools in Marvelous Designer 2025. There are three ways to open the animation editor. First, from the Animation tab in the top main menu. Second, through the Window tab in the main menu. And third, by clicking the arrow button at the very bottom of the interface. Once opened, you can easily detach the panel and move it around, or close the editor using the icons at the top right corner of the panel. The animation editor is divided into three key areas. First, the toolbar is located right at the very top of the editor. On the far left, you'll find the simulation record button. Clicking this will record the garment simulation together with the avatar's motion, and the results will be stored in the timeline. Next to it are the playback control buttons. These let you move to the first frame, step forward frame by frame, or simply play and pause the animation. At the center, you'll see the simulation quality settings. Here, you can choose the desired quality level, or enter values manually for more precise adjustments. The higher the value, the longer it takes to simulate. For most cases, the animation stable setting should work fine to begin with. Below the toolbar is the animation timeline, where you can manage both garment simulation data and animation data. Animation data is displayed in gray, while simulation data appears in red. At the bottom, you'll find the playback range bar, which lets you define the start and end frames for playback. At the top, there is a clamp that allows you to select a specific section to play. Lastly, with the Add Animation button, you can add keyframes to various properties like fabric, pattern, avatar, pin, wind controller, and simulation property. Now, let's take a look at the Configurations panel. This panel lets you adjust how your animation plays back, including its speed and display units. First, under Play Type, you can choose how the animation will be played. You can select either frame stepping or real time. When it's set to real time and you click the play button, you'll notice the simulation runs smoother compared to the frame stepping option. Below that, current frame shows the frame you're currently viewing. Start frame and end frame define the playback range. So by setting these values, you can loop only within that section. Next is Scene Time Warp. This controls the playback speed of your animation. A value of 1.0 plays at the original speed, while 2.0 plays at half speed. Twice as slow, increasing values above 1 will help you record more frames during simulation. Once done recording, you can set it back to 1. Display Unit allows you to switch between viewing in frames or seconds. FPS sets the number of frames per second for playback. And lastly, when Preserve Frames is checked, the original frames are maintained, and changing the FPS will not affect them. When using your custom avatar with animation, you can import it in FBX, Alembic, or USD format. In this tutorial, I'll import a custom avatar rigged in Mixamo without any animation data. If you are using avatars from platforms like DAZ 3D, Adobe Mixamo, Reillusion Character Creator, or Unreal Engine MetaHuman. Just follow my settings. I set the unit to centimeters, Daz Studio, and unchecked all the other options in the checkbox. Next, go to the Avatar tab in the main menu at the top. Click Avatar Editor, and then open the IK Joint tab. As you can see, the avatar's joints are working in FK for now. But by clicking Auto Mapping, the joints will switch to IK mode. And if you see the complete sign at the bottom of the panel, go ahead and click the Set T-Pose button. Now you can check that the joints work in IK mode. And by clicking Reset Pose, the avatar will return to its original position. Now, click the library icon at the top right. Under the Avatar tab, open the Mail folder. There, you'll find Motion Files. I'll choose Walking in place and double-click to apply the motion data to our custom avatar. Next, click the arrow button to open the animation editor. 
Then press the play button to check the motion. If the avatar's joints are twisted, you can use the offset joint feature to correct their position. Right-click on the applied motion layer and select offset joint. Then adjust the x-axis value until the arms are aligned in the correct position. With the offset joint feature, you can easily fix misaligned joints on a custom avatar and adjust it into the pose you want. Next, to run the simulation, let's load the Garmin asset we've prepared in advance. Once loaded, change the simulation quality to animation stable. Now, let's go ahead and start recording the animation. Once the animation recording is complete, play it back first to make sure the simulation looks correct. After confirming, let's use the Add Animation feature to apply a wind animation. First, go to the Environment Display tab at the top of the 3D window and check Show Wind Controller. Next, in the Animation Editor, click the Add Animation tab and select Wind Controller. Now, open the newly created Wind Controller layer by clicking the arrow on the left and uncheck Unlimited Bound. This way, you can directly see and control the area of the wind. And then click the scale icon at the top right to expand the range. At this point, pressing shortcut key 5 to switch to the top view will make adjustments easier. Once the scaling is done, go back to the animation editor, open the transform tab, and then expand the animation editor. Then open the position and rotation sections under the transform tab. Clicking the plus icon here will create a keyframe. If you click the plus icon next to the X, Y, or Z under rotation, you can create keyframes individually for each axis. Now, move the timeline cursor to a new frame. Then change the position of the wind controller and click the keyframe icon in the transform tab to create a keyframe all at once. In the same way, move forward about 30 frames, adjust the wind controller's position, and create another keyframe. Repeat this process to build your animation. As a tip, if you turn on the auto keying button at the top of the animation editor, keyframes will be created automatically whenever you move the wind controller, making the workflow much easier. Once you've finished setting the keyframes, let's change the interpolation of those keyframes and see the difference it makes. Select all the keyframes you created by dragging over them and then right click. By default, the interpolation is set to linear. This time, let's change it to constant and see the difference. With constant, the transition between keyframes is not smooth. Instead, it suddenly jumps. Now, drag to select all the keyframes again, right click, and change the interpolation to cubic. With cubic, the controller's motion accelerates gradually at the start and slows down at the end. I'll set the interpolation back to linear since I want the wind to flow at a uniform speed throughout. Now that all keyframes are set, let's activate the wind, go back to frame zero and press the shortcut key three to switch from top view to three quarter view. Then click the record button. Great, the recording is complete. Let's press the play button to see the result. As you can see, when unlimited bound is unchecked, the wind only affects the box area defined by the wind controller. Next, let's take a look at the video capture feature. At the top right side of the animation editor toolbar, you'll find the video capture button. By using this feature, you can export the simulation recorded in the 3D viewport as a video file for review. Lastly, if you want to export the recorded simulation data itself, go to the top menu and select File Arrow Export. From there, you can choose between formats like FBX, Alembic, or USD to output the simulation data. Thank you for watching.